Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. I am the CHAL, and today, Chell Chats, Dogs to Rovers, Nil, Swindon Town, Nil. Now, this is a bit of a different formula for this week because there's some games we'll be doing visual commentaries for, but there's some games like this where we'll be doing a full time tactical and full, deep, proper analysis of the match outside the stadium with some cutaways of the stadium inside along the way just to keep you guys entertained from inside as well. Uh, so, before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click notification bell, scan this YouTube video. Uh, obviously, later in this show, in this particular video, we're going to have Alex's thoughts, who's a Swindon Town fan. So go and check out uh, the timestamp in the description if you want to see a Swindon Town's view on the match. But let's get started with the first half. Now, I thought Doncaster looked comfortable on the ball at times. Definitely portrayed it very well. Definitely comfortable in possession at times. Um, I felt like obviously Doncaster had, had slightly more of the ball in the first half. I think Swindon were chasing second balls at times. But there were still those mistakes from us uh, in the first half. I think that sometimes we were putting a few straight passes aside. I think that sometimes we were a little bit careless. Um, I think that Fal and Maxwell, my two standout players from that first half, I think that Fal and Maxwell were pacey, they were attacking, they were brutal. I think that both Madhu and James both had their A game on. Um, Rowe looked a bit careless at times, giving a couple of balls away at times, and then obviously the red card, which we will go on about in just a moment. It seemed like, especially with Swindon in the first half, and sometimes in the second half as well, especially when Swindon had more of the ball in the second half. I think that the first half, they they had, um, you know, more... There was crosses, for example, they had more going to the first man or beating everybody. There was nothing going really in the centre and there was nothing really productive in the centre from the cross to the box. So Swindon struggled with that and I thought they really struggled with that at times. Before we go into the second half, we're going to give you the thoughts of Alex from Swindon Town. Uh, so take it away, Chow from the past and Alex. Alex, disappointing day for you, Look, considering 11 goals in the last two games. What went wrong for you guys today? Oh, it was an absolute catastrophe to say first. Usually we're full of movement, like they've linked up play between Kemp and Young. It's usually fantastic, but it just wasn't there today. I think, to be fair to you guys, you managed to stifle us, particularly when you only had 10 players on the pitch. You sat deep, you defended well, and we just couldn't get the ball to our attacking players. So. Absolutely. From the red card, then, obviously the red card one of the big talking points from today's game against Tommy Rowe. Of course, the foul on George McCatherine. Right call from your angle? Well, we were quite far away from it, from where we were, but it did look like a concrete kick to the face. Well, you, usually, usually is a red card, so... Yeah, I'm not going to shy away from that fact from my angle. It was definitely a red card, even though we didn't mean it. We know Rowe didn't mean it, but we lost a straight red. So it um, felt like a complete gift to us, though, I have to say, because we were getting really frustrated. We weren't playing our football, and then right before half time, you were reduced to 10 men, and we're thinking, great, OK, we might get away with one here, but <laughs> it, it, it didn't happen that way, so... Yeah, definitely. Um, overall, then, what are the kind of things that you look at as positives from the game? Let's think about a positive here. What can you take out of this game to take into the next one? Another clean sheet, another game unbeaten. We still haven't lost this season. We haven't lost any game in 90 minutes, cups included, although we have lost some penalties twice. Um, so that that's the positive, but ultimately it's, it's a feeling of frustration. Like, and again, like Wrexham, a game we absolutely should have won. Um, we're in a good position in the league, but we've dropped two points today, we've dropped two points against Wrexham, we were 2 up against Crewe at home and Drew with them, so it's hugely frustrating for us. Absolutely, and then for, and then also what the, the constructive criticism, we don't call them negatives here on the channel, we call them constructive criticisms, what do you think the team need to work on for the next game? It's just about getting that movement back, it's about being patient, it's not about rushing or panicking. I think we were feeling the pressure to win today, and you see that sometimes when teams go down to 10 men, and you don't score quite quickly after, and the team are banking in, and players are snatching at it, these players aren't making the right decision. We saw a lot of that from Dan Kemp. Uh, we may have Hutton had a good chance for him, but Sky's all over the stand. It's, we just need to be confident in ourselves because we've got so much creative attacking talent in the team. We just need to trust ourselves to put the ball in the net. Absolutely, and in terms of your squad today, who can you pick out as the kind of star players for you today? Honestly, I don't think anyone really played well. Like I thought Hepburn Murphy was good to get him on the pitch and use his pace, but we didn't really get him in behind enough, partly because you guys were sitting so deep. Usually the key men are, are Kemp and Young, 
didn't think Kemp was really in the game today. Young had a few good moments where he like was taking men on. He went to left wing back at one point in the second half, and he was good down the left side, even though he's, he's an attacking player. He's not used to playing there. Yeah. And so I thought he did okay, but like it would be a load of fives and sixes out of ten, I think, if I was, if I was scoring them. So. Absolutely. And from a Donk Strowers perspective, who do you pick out as their star players today? Well, it's tricky because like it, a lot of the duty today was defensively, so I feel like you had some you had some moments where you caused us some problems offensively. Um, I think you've got to give it to the defenders, the centre backs and stuff. You did a great job. Um, the goalkeeper as well. Is it Lawler? In yeah. Goal? Like he was, he commanded himself really well. He had a good balance of slowing the ball down, slowing the play down when he had it, and, and I thought that was kind of what got it for you, like just being smart in those situations. Absolutely, and of course, obviously the season's already started, we're only a few games into the season, but based on what you've seen today and what you've seen so far this season, can you keep some beating run going for as long as possible? Is there a possibility you could be fighting amongst that top 10 this year? Well, at the start of the season, I, I said in my predictions that I thought we'd come like 13th, like I, I wasn't looking like a promotion push at all. Um, we let ourselves down in the market as well on deadline day. We were expecting to sign three or four players and we ended up signing no one and losing a player. Jake Wakeling went to Peterborough and was supposed to be. Um, but he's like a fourth choice striker, so it wasn't like a huge problem. Um, we just really don't have any depth. If we get suspensions or injuries to our three centre backs, we're down to a youth academy grad. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to happen at some point. Like, you know, how many yellow cards got dished out today and how many yellow yeah. cards are being dished out. It's going to be a huge problem, and the squad's not. The squad's too thin to compete, I think, in this league. So. Brilliant. Uh, Alex, thank you very, very much for joining us today, and good yeah, luck for the rest yeah, of the season. Yeah, no worries, mate. You too. I'm sure you won't end up bottom of the league. <laughs> so, yeah. On the up. So, into the second half then, and overall, for me, it felt like it was just one of them. I think it was one of them where Swindon had the majority of the ball, we were under pressure for the majority of the time. But we did well defensively, and I give the Rovers players credit for their defensive performance. Uh, I think Wood looked better in the second half. I think that Bailey looked more physical on the right-hand side. And I was worried at ba with Bailey at right back in that second half when you bring on Anderson, who, by the way, had a great game off the bench. You bring in Biggins into the midfield, who had a decent game. I felt, in my opinion, that Bailey on that right back, I was worried at first because it was square pegs around holes. But the physicality on that right-hand side, not giving the winger a second to breathe, Gave Bailey a better second half. Overall, I felt like, again, though, attack-wise, we just... I don't know what it was. Einstein did well, don't get me wrong. Einstein did very well. Molyneux ran himself into the ground today. Uh, Ironside tracked well. Tracked his man well in the first half, uh, in the 32nd minute. Um, I felt like um, Rovers did well in terms of a defensive showcase. Now, the main thing which led him from the first half into the second half and kind of changed the game and the flow of the game was the red card. I cannot get away from that fact, even as a Rovers fan, that I can stand here and I can say it was definitely 100% a red card from my angle. Rovers fans will disagree in the comment section down below, but I'm saying for a fact it was a red card from my angle. It doesn't matter if McCatherine is going down in the first second or two before the accidental boot in the face but I'm not lying from my angle it looks like a bro kick from Sheamus. I'm not even gonna sit here as a Rovers fan and lie. It was a straight red card for Tommy Rowe. Even if he didn't mean to do it and I know he didn't mean to do it because McEthrin came in and Rowe it was wrong place, wrong time. McEthrin looked like he was going to go down with the challenge anyway. Not much contact on the initial but then Rowe hit what I would probably describe, no other exaggeration, as a bro kick from Sheamus. Straight bang in the face. And I was sat at the angle when I saw it, and it was straight there. Definite red. Can't complain about that. But that changed the flow of the second half. It put Rovers in a more defensive vulnerability. And Swindon were just putting balls in left, right, centre, playing around the park, putting Rovers under considerable pressure. And we just had to press forward. You know, there was times when we gave them that time on the ball and I was screaming at those players, come on! Swindon were having time on the ball in that second half, but the problem from a Swindon perspective is they didn't do a lot with it. And this is another thing I'll praise the attack for in that second half. I praise the defensive in the second half. We've got to praise the attack. We've got to praise the attack because, um, like I said, Ironside tried. Molyneux ran himself into the ground at times. 
but from a defensive point of view as well, they kept Jake Young, Dan Kemp and Charlie Austin extremely quiet. Kemp looked lost in that first half. Charlie Austin tried to get involved at times but didn't do a lot. Um, Young was quiet, I didn't see much from him either. Swindon looked very much off the pace at times today and to be fair, to keep an unbeaten side to a goalless draw with where we are in the league table at this early stage and the fact that we're trying to create that kind of continuity in the attack and try and get those goals and those balls in the box to create the opportunities, I think is no mean feat, especially keeping a side who's scored 11 goals in the last couple of games quiet for a game and keep no goals from them, I think is no mean feat. We've got to give tremendous credit to the lads for that. My main thing going into Wrexham, which, uh, let me just say, filming this match or not, I will be there next week. Um, the main thing here with the Wrexham game next week is to just improve that attacking quality. We have got it in us. Like I said, Einstein did the deep work very, 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 very well. Foul was pacey, direct for a six-foot strike striker. He was tall as anything, but has got the pace of a madman. Foul has the opportunity here to build on that. And this is what we like about a raw young talent. He has the ability to build layers on top of everything. So it's like Lego, you build on top of one another. So for me personally, Fal has the opportunity now to build this as a platform to go forward and build his layers and keep progressing every single week to allow him more opportunities every week. And that's where I'm coming from with this. Ironside, like I said, did the deep work very, very well. Trapped back when needed to. Did the physical stuff in the air as well. And for me, I think that if we can go with that attack or go with one of those two up front in a 4-3-3 switch around in the, in the Wrexham game next week, that will do us in good stead. I get why we went 3-5-2 in the first half because, in my opinion, it worked against Everton in the first half, but it's a different game. Swindon a week down the channels, so you play 4-3-3, you go with the back four, and you play down the channels, in my opinion. I think the choice in formation for the first half, just in my personal opinion, was wrong, despite the fact we had slightly more of the ball. I just think it would have been better going 4-3-3 and just pushing Swindon in their own half down them channels. But we move on. It's Wrexham next week. Obviously, filming or not, I will be there. We'll probably do a full-time report on the coach home from Wales. But thank you very much for watching this full-time report. Obviously, big shout-out to Alex, the Swindon Town fan, who gave us his thoughts uh, before we went into the second half analysis. Obviously, we will be back for the Wrexham game. We've got plenty more content coming over the next few months. And for now, I am the CHAL. Help, to for now.